Let's welcome Dr. David Jackson. Drum roll, first one I've ever had. Appreciate that. My name is David Jackson. I'm a chiropractor. I'm excited to spend some time with you guys today, but I got to check in. It's been two days. How's everyone doing so far? Woo! Nearly convincing. Um, all right, so I flew out here from San Diego, where, which is my home in Del Mar. Uh, missed yesterday because I have three daughters, my 17-year-old, I'm sorry, she's 18, just turned 18, just graduated high school yesterday. So I had to either miss a day and pay Mark later or pay my daughter for the rest of my life. So uh, I did what any, any good father would do and, and uh, enjoyed some family time. And now I'm here to bring you guys the best information I possibly can in 29 minutes. So here's what I wanna do. You know, this topic, it was kind of themed, if you will, of the living a million dollar lifestyle. And what I wanna tell you right up front was, you define what that means. I'm not here to define what that means for you. The term million dollars, I would have chosen um, maybe a blueprint for success only because it's not about dollars, is it? It's never been about dollars, certainly not for me. Um, I'm fortunate that I have several millions of dollars, but that's not what I want to talk to you about today. I want to talk to you from a chiropractic perspective about the difference between treating effect and correcting cause. Does that sound familiar to you guys? Yeah. Two students in the room. Good. All right. So, by the way, if you interact with me, you will get more, I can promise you. And since we're all here, we might as well just play full out like something's actually at stake. I don't know, like life maybe. Theirs, ours, yours, mine. Do you guys agree with that? That there's something at stake? Okay, so let's, let's actually go at it as if there truly is something very, very important at stake. And what I want to share with you today is as many, I, I have eight Ds. I don't know if I'll get through them all. I'll try my best to get through them because these are practical tips. I mean, truly practical tips that will help you create Whatever your dream is, whatever it is for you, I will never define what your dream or your vision should be for you, but I've done it for me. And I can share on my uh, nearly 29 years of experience in this profession, I can share with you how to go from a completely frustrated, depressed, and broke chiropractor who burnt his license in a garbage can after two and a half years because he failed nine times, moi, to standing here today addressing this topic with you. So I know a little bit about this journey because I have lived it. I understand that uh, the gentleman following me uh, is, has been on some TV show, Survivor, and I feel like, I'm the freaking Survivor, man. I mean, I, I know that earlier people were talking about the difference between failing and failure, and I should get some sort of mark, some sort of trophy for the most failing is stir. <laughs> Something like that. Because I have been there, done that, and bought the t-shirt. And what I'm going to share with you now is just a, a small slice of what I call my epic journey. And the first part of the journey in order to live your million dollar lifestyle, whatever that means for you, and by the way, if you're a CA going a million dollars, why is he even, this is you. It's your definition. It's whatever it means to you. But the first thing, whether you're a CA, a spouse, a supporter, a doctor, a team member, whatever it is, is the first D is you've got to start dreaming again. And I want you to think about this. And some of you are going to write it down. And some of you go, I will remember. And one or two of you will actually do these Ds. And you'll come up to me later and you'll say, you know what? That day changed my life forever. Because these are not by accident. When we begin to dream again, see, how many of you have kids? I saw a lot of hands go up earlier. I've got, I'm, I'm blessed with three daughters. I have an 18-year-old, a 20-year-old, and a 22-year-old. They're gorgeous, so if you pray, I'm still accepting prayers. Um, they're all grown, but I'm not out of the woods yet, right? So when you raise kids, how fun is it to listen to their dreams? Right, when they're really little, daddy, mommy, and they, they tell you about what they want to do and who they want to be, and, you're, and you do what? You just encourage, and, and, you, and you, you bring that dream along, and, and you let them believe in that dream. 
And I know as a father what I've done is I've protected their dream. Because I, I've, I've waited, I've watched, I've calculated. I, I've put the crosshairs on the people that I know are going to try to take my daughter's dreams away from them. They're going to say, hey, that's all great. That works for some people. But what are you really going to do with your life? You can't be all those things, so choose one. I want to be in the presence of that person when they try to do that to any one of my girls, who are all adults, by the way. I'm still waiting. But someone has taken your dream. Because very few of you that I speak to, and I've been doing this for 29 years, I've traveled all over the world, I've spoken on six continents to 20 or 30,000 chiropractors, and I'm telling you, what I hear on the street every single day is a very different version of a dream than you had when you were in school, or that you had when you first graduated. And dreams change, but what I see happening in chiropractic is we keep lowering the bar to make ourselves feel good that we haven't achieved our dream yet. People have taken our dream from us. It happens in school, the best of schools. I know for a fact when I went to Cairo College, I didn't have the privilege of going to Parker, but when I went, I was told several times what I could not do. Don't expect to be able to do that. You'll never be able to do that. It's not that good environment. Everything has changed. There's no insurance. All these different things, everyone was trying to take the dream. And if you want to live your million dollar life, if you want to live your cause and create whatever effect you choose to create, the very first step is you've got to dream again. You have to give your permission, yourself permission to dream. And you know what? When I talk about dreaming, when it comes to chiropractic and what's at stake for us, I'm talking about big, audacious, badass dreams. I don't know if I can say that, but I just did. Big dreams. I mean the kind that should scare you and freak everybody else out for sure. You know what dreams I'm talking about? Like the I can have it all dream? Anyone remember that one? You guys, seriously, does anyone remember that one? Okay. <laughs> now i got to back up a little bit. If no one even remembers the dream, we might not be connected with it. But that dream of really building an unbelievable life of substance, a life of impact, a life of service. And when you build a life of sustenance, impact, and service, the effect that, you that we typically measure to say is someone successful, that's just an effect, by the way. That effect usually follows, does it not? It's a law of cause and effect. But we can't even get to the second level until we give ourselves permission to reconnect with a dream. Some of you really have a challenge with that part of it because you failed so many times. And as I just described from earlier, failing and failed are two very different things. You should always be failing because you are always seeking growth. You're always seeking improvement. You're always seeking new opportunity. So I want you to really think about no matter how far away you are from that dream, I want you to just just unabashedly dream again. That means if you're new, if you're stuck, if you've been in the trenches for 20 years and it's good, but it's just not what you really dreamt it would be, dream again for a few minutes. Just really connect with possibility. Does it blow you away? Is, it, is, this, is this just me? I don't know. But, you know, as a chiropractor, I look for interference. I look for disturbances to, to human potential. And... I look for incongruencies in my own life constantly, constantly. That's how I become the best version of my authentic self, is to remove contradictions. And one of the contradictions that I see sometimes in myself and certainly in chiropractors is the absolute passionate, purposeful drive to help people live to their potential. Is that what you guys are all about? And it doesn't matter how you practice, what your technique is, where you want to school, we love to help people live to their potential. Not, I don't know, about a year ago, I was, I was uh, down in, in, in Cancun for a couple days with a guy named Grant Cardone. I don't know if you know Grant Cardone. And I was having a conversation with him. We were chatting, and he said, well, what do you think you're, you know, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most, how much of your potential have you reached? And it was weird. Immediately, without really thinking, I was like, 7. I said, 7. And he said, seven. And I said, yeah, seven. 
And I kind of, you know, then I started thinking about it. I'm like, well, you know, I'm 52 years old, and I've got this, and, you know, rah, 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 rah. I was kind of calculating numbers and time behind and time ahead and, all, and seven. And then suddenly I was like, he didn't say a word. He just said, okay, seven. And I said, wait, you know what? Three. <laughs> three. And he said, three. Why a three? And I said, because the potential that I've executed compared to the dream that I have, the gap, it's a three versus a seven for sure. It wasn't kind of a, a self-shaming session. I wasn't going, oh, I'm not worthy, I'm only a three. But when we truly look at our own potential, does it scare you? It should. At least for me, it should. When I truly look inside, I say, what is my actual potential? I have spent an entire career, an entire life, helping other people achieve their potential. And oh, I've seen miracles with that potential. I've seen blind eyes see, deaf ears hear. I have had children that their mothers brought to me and, and, and on their form it said, save my baby's life because they were told to take them home and prepare for their death and their graduated high school. I've seen potential. I see it every single day. But what about my potential? What about my potential to create massive impact into the world? How much is there really? I've, and you know what? I've done a lot. I really have. I, was, I tore up my diploma and burnt it, became an auto mechanic after two and a half years in practice. I truly did. I quit. And now I'm standing in front of you on a Parker stage. I live in a multi-million dollar home. I drive really fast cars. <laughs> I have my most prized possession. I have an epic love affair with my wife after 25 years. Epic love affair. Like the kind that people go, really? What is your secret? See, none of the stuff matters. What matters is the potential that lies ahead of us. And I'm going to ask you in this dream to really truly take inventory and say, how close am I to my real potential? And how big could my dream be? See, once you've dreamed again, once you've allowed yourself to go, well, you know, I really didn't want to be so involved in insurance. I kind of want to do cash. If that's your dream, then dream it. Well, I, I, you know, I love practicing, but I also love my family, and I love traveling the world, and, you know, I, I didn't really want to be 60 hours a week. I thought by now I'd be in a different place, or I wanted to make more money because I wanted to be the number one contributor to my church, or I wanted to be a philanthropist, so I always wanted to be a multimillionaire because I wanted to give back. I wanted to support student scholarships to Parker College. I wanted to, I, whatever it is you wanted to do, once you've dreamed it, now it's time to define it, the second D. And when I say define it, listen please, with clarity. What do you want? See, this is where this is this is this is where people get stuck. They they say, well, I, you know, and they kind of give you this kind of a nebulous idea of their future. How many of you ever built a home before? Like you, like blueprints, right? The blueprints are the hardest part of the process, are they not? They're also the most important part of the process. Without a set of blueprints, and depending on the house, that that thing rolled up is bigger than a baseball bat. Because think about it for a moment, when you define what's going to occur in this home, it's, it's a home, it's a structure, it's a thing. But when you go through the process of defining what that is, you have to start with a foundation, dirt. What are you gonna do? What is it, the, 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 the person there, or the people that come in with the tractors, what are they gonna do with the lot just to get it ready? Then you got to define the foundation. There's a whole set on the plans of the foundation. And then on top of the foundation, once you get that, then there's the structure. We call them the studs, the walls, right? Then they have a roofing plan to go on top of that so you have some, a roof over your head. Then you have a whole plan for the electrical application and a whole other section for plumbing and a whole other section for HVAC and now a whole section for home theater and automation and everything that's cool, right? And you end up spending a tremendous amount of time and a tremendous amount of money in the design phase, the design phase, the definition phase of this is what I want. And when you finally get through that phase, which by the way takes months, 
And I've never, did any of you draw your own architectural blueprints? I mean, completely, start to finish. I don't mean the napkin like I did, design. I'm talking about the architectural blueprints. If you did, you're an architect. Congratulations. But we paid an expert, we paid a consultant, we paid a coach to say, hey, here's what I want. And the coach didn't go, no, you don't want that. At least I hope they didn't do that. They didn't say, you don't want a center hall colonial, you want a contemporary. Well, no, I wanted a center hall colonial. Well, I like contemporaries. Well, you, you didn't do that. But they gave you advice, they gave you feedback, they, gave you, they challenged your thinking on some things. And at the end of the day, you have this plan clearly defined as to what it's going to take for you to get the key and live in your dream. That's a complicated process, but it can't hold the candle to how complicated building an epic life is. And most of us try to go through our life on hope and a prayer. The prayer's good, the hope's not such a good strategy. Instead of hoping, we need to get clear and we need to define what it is. We need to have our own blueprint for success, our own blueprint on every category in our relationships, in our personal life, in our finances, in our business, in our character, our emotional life, our intellectual life, our quality of life, our own physical fitness. Every area, we need to have a plan. And those plans have to integrate and end up in the result you want. That's in the, that happens in the define phase. So we dream big. Now we start putting things down. We part, start putting our ideas down onto paper. I'm not talking about goals, by the way. We'll get there. I'm talking about clear definition of what it is that you want. The third D is now you've got to bring in desire because it's not easy. This, I love this about life. If it was easy, we'd all be the same. But the truth is, it's not. And you may not like me. I didn't come here to be liked, by the way. I have a couple friends. I'm good. I came here to be authentic. You may not agree with me. That's okay, too. Really, I came here to kind of stir you up a little bit, hopefully inspire some, but challenge all. Because... The third D, desire, is where people fail the most. I believe it's the number one criteria to success. Napoleon Hill called it a burning desire. And when we think of the word desire, when I say, how bad do you want it? You know what people tell me? I got thousands of clients all over the world. You know what they tell me, Epic clients? They go, I want it real bad. Like, really? How, how bad? Well, re real bad. And they go through this process of trying to convince me how bad they want it. Can you see desire in people? I can. Can you feel it? Can you see the, the trail that it leaves? You know when someone is burning, has a burning desire towards something. Most of you that are in a relationship, at least at one time, maybe not now, had a burning desire for that person. And there were actions attached to that desire. People ask me all the time, Hey, what's the secret to your love affair? Oh my gosh, I mean, I, they watch. What's the secret? I said, I got a lot. I could do a whole program on that. But I'll tell you one, I don't believe love's an emotion. <gasps> what? I think love is an action that creates an emotion. And I know the actions I took when I had that burning desire for my wife, Nicole, and guess what I do today? I still open her door. She drives alone, by the way. She's capable. I've seen her. She can do it. But I still do it because it's an action that creates an emotion, and 25 years later, I'm deeply in love with her, and vice versa. See, there has to be a burning desire. And you've heard the story, I didn't make it up, I don't have time to go into it, but I'll give you a quick little rant on it, because I get passionate about desire, because I help chiropractors all over the world, but I can't help you desire. That's you, you have to bring that. But I'll give you an example. Young chiropractor shows up, this is a story, that I've adapted, you've heard this before probably. But a young chiropractor shows up, I live on the beach down in Del Mar, California, and they show up and they go, hey Dr. Jackson, or Dr. David, you know, I, I really want, I want to build a great practice, I want to build a great life, I want an epic life that you, that you talk about. I'm like, okay, well how bad do you want it? I want it real bad. I'm like, okay, let's, I'll meet you down at the beach 4.30 tomorrow morning, right here at 15th Street. Well, that's, I'll meet you at the beach, if you want, how bad do you want it? Real bad, 4.30 tomorrow morning, okay. It's January, by the way. It's kind of cold. Water's 56 degrees. Surf's high in January, right? 
I've I'm I'm been surfing my whole life, so I'm confident, I'm comfortable. I show up in my bathing suit, 4.30 in the morning. I'm cold. They show up in full-on clothes, jeans, a sweatshirt, a hoodie, and Air Jordans. They're selling them all over the hotel today. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> They're tennis shoes. And I look at them and said, so how bad? You really want to be successful, huh? And they go, yeah. How bad? Real bad. Okay, follow me. I don't mean on Facebook, by the way. Follow me. And I start walking into the water. What's the first thing they do? What is it? Um, uh, uh, how bad do you want it? I want it real bad. Follow me. I start walking into the water. If they do desire, they're going to walk into the water, shoes and all. They didn't come prepared. They didn't think ahead. Why are we meeting on the beach? It's Jackson. He grew up in the ocean. He's probably going to do something really crazy and stupid. But I really want it. There's got to be a lesson here. I'm going to show up prepared. They're not prepared, but they start following. As we start walking into the water, the waves are crushing us, right? They're, they're getting pummeled because they're not watching what I'm doing. They don't see that every time a wave comes, I turn my body and lock my back leg and lean in with my shoulder. They don't see it. So every time I go 10 feet forward, they go 10 feet backward. They get crushed. But they finally get back up, and we're getting deeper. We get about chest deep. Doc, how bad do you want this? Oh, I want it re re real bad, do Doc. Okay, follow me. We keep going out. We go further and further out until you're barely able to jump over the waves. And listen, being born in the water pretty much, I know what it takes to drown a man. I truly do. I know how long a human being, I've been held under. I know how long someone can be underwater, relaxed or struggling. So we finally get to that point where they can't stay above the water anymore. And I said, one last opportunity. How bad do you want it? I want it real bad. Boom! I take their head and I push them underwater with every bit I've got. I hold them underwater. They're struggling. They're dying. And they're struggling for what? They're struggling for something. And at the very last moment, I pull them up. <gasps> they gasp for air. They're looking like I'm crazy, which I probably am. And I look them in the eye and say, until you want to succeed as much as you wanted that breath, it's not going to happen for you. So you can't tell me you want to save kids' lives. You have to burn to save their lives. You can't tell me you want an epic love affair. You have to wake up every morning saying, that's what I want. You can't say, I want to take my children and experience the world. you got to wake up and look at the map and say, we're going to Bali for a month, which I just did with my three girls and my wife, for a month. You've got to burn desire. That's what makes people successful. Now look, it's easy to go, eh, that's okay. If your desire is to sit, grow up on a farm, if your desire is to sit on a beach with an umbrella and you drink, then burn that desire. But if your desire is to impact people, then you have got to be clear and you've got to be fired up and you've got to be passionate. You've got to have a purpose. Listen, what you have to have, remember the dream I talked about? What is a, what is a vision? A vision is a dream with action steps. See, a vision is a dream with action steps. And your vision should be so audacious, so compelling, that it sucks you out of the mattress you have. It pulls you onto the floor, and it rips you into your practice every single day. Even the days where you don't feel like being there. The vision of seeing that world that these guys and gals have been sharing with you this weekend, that vision has to be so compelling that it just pulls you like a tractor beam. On top of that, or I should say underneath that, you need to have a purpose that pushes a vision that pulls, a purpose that pushes. And when you can align a vision that pulls and a purpose that pushes, you will get through all those challenges that you're concerned about. All the obstacles, all the failing fast that you talked about yesterday. Because it'll be there. The desire helps both of those move you forward. So you dream it, you define it, you desire it, then one of the key things you've got to do is you've got to design it. You've got to put it all together into your map, into your blueprint. And then you've got to declare it. You've got to take ownership of it.
I can, I must, I will. And I'm not talking about just repeating over and over affirmations. I'm talking about having an attitude, a belief system, a mindset that regardless of what gets in my way, I will not be stopped. I declare that vision is mine. By the way, it's no one else's. You can't take someone else's vision. You can't take someone else's dream. That's why I don't teach people how to do scripts. I teach them how to think for themselves, how to speak for themselves, and to do it in an authentic way. Because, see, being authentic is what the people in your community want. It's what they demand. They want the truth. I just did a survey of over 300 chiropractors. And the number one reason, I knew this, but I didn't want to see it in writing, but it came back. And there were lots of options. There were 12 different options. And the number one thing that held chiropractors back from their perspective from being successful is the desire, listen to the words, the desire to be accepted, to be liked. How weird is that? Well, it's the number one human desire. We're all we all want to be accepted. If we didn't want to be accepted, we'd die as infants, right? That's a human component. One of the number one primordial desires is to be loved, nurtured, and accepted. We're no different than chiropractors. But when you take the oath, when you take the job as an epic CA, when you walk into a practice, guess what? It's not about you anymore. It's about them. And when we place our own self-esteem over their truth and their results, we're going to have a problem. When you sit down to do a report of findings, you're more concerned that they like you than they get them face down on your table, we have a problem. When you go out and do a talk, when you come to Parker, if I was more worried about you liking me than me trying my best to be effective, we would have a problem. So we've got to get over ourselves and be congruent with who we're really here for, and who we're really here for are the people that we love and serve, or at least that we proclaim to. So we have to declare exactly who it is we are and exactly what it is we are after. You got to dream it. You got to define it. You got to design it. You got to declare it. And then you have to defy it. And when I mean defy it, it's defy all the naysayers. It's defy all the limiting beliefs that have been instilled within you, which, by the way, you purchased for a price. Many of us purchased our beliefs unconsciously, unknowingly, but we bought them. And they are defining your life. We used to say you, be, you are what you eat. <laughs> no, you become what you think. And we have got to begin to defy those people that say you can't do that. Who do you think you are? We're not those kind of people. I wasn't born to do that. And listen, whether you want to see, I love this. I get clients that hire me and they say, hey, you know what? I love this. I get a single mom. They hire me and go, what do you want? And they go, well, you know, and they start regurgitating what other people told them they should have. And I go, cool, 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 but what do you want? Well, no, and then they go through a little another iteration. I go, I got it, but just pretend like there's no rules. What do you want? Well, I'd love to see 100 today, one day, and go home and stay with my kids the other six days. And I'm like, let's do that. That sounds cool. That's going to challenge you. It's going to challenge me. I'm in. You in? Let's do that. And we do that. 100 a day, one day, done. If that's what they wanted. Other people say, I want to see, you know, a thousand a week. Why? Because someone told you to? Why? Would you be on, I, I, I do this all the time. They go, oh, I want to see a thousand a week. I'll, I get you 975. <laughs> You're going to be disappointed? They go, no. I go, why a thousand? Tell me, who, who told you? I had a sign in my garage for years that said thousand a week, thousand a week. I had a big banner when I was young in practice. Thousand a week, thousand a week. I pulled in one day, I sat in my car. And I was like, I don't want to see a thousand a week. I just had this, like, revel. I don't want to see a thousand a week. I'm like, get out the ladder, take it down. I was going to just cross it out and put 500. <laughs> and it wasn't because I was downgrading. I was like, I fell in love with my life, too. Right? I, I, and I wanted, I wanted balance because I think, I think a chiropractor, this is crazy. I think a chiropractor should be so fulfilled 
so successful, so attractive that other people want to become like them, you know, like chiropractors. I think that'd be really cool. I think it'd fill our schools again. If chiropractors were more attractive, I don't mean you guys are good looking from what I can see, but I mean, you know, like they want your life. See, we've got to think of things that are authentic and aligned with us. And we have to begin to defy all the naysayers, the people that bring us down, the people that say we can't do it. And they will be there. I've learned the people, some of the people I love the most, for them to stay where they are, it's easier to go, hey, come here, instead of for them to come with me. So if you have a vision that is audacious, if you've got this dream that is just massive, like, who are you to think you could change the world? You're you. That's who you are. Did you hear Fab talk earlier? What did Jim see in him? Right? It's the accent. It's the accent. <laughs> and the spray tan, right? It's an inside joke. He doesn't do spray tan. What do we all see in someone? see potential we see that dream and it's up to us to guard the dream within ourselves if you do not have someone i don't know what you want to name him or her or both but if you don't have a guard that stands at the gate of your mind that says explicit instructions you are not allowed in because you are a negative limiting thought or you're a negative limiting person which I know that's kind of harsh, but guess what you got to do to accomplish big things in life? I'll leave you with one principle that I guarantee will change your life if you actually do it. It's a mathematical principle, so I know it's late in the evening. I know it's been a long weekend. It's going to be tough for some of you, but here's the principle. Success is a function of subtraction. Remove things. You don't need to add much. We need to remove obstacles. We need to remove disturbance from above, down, inside out. We need to remove subluxations that occur above Atlas and ourselves so we can remove subluxations that occur below Atlas and others. We have to remove the people, the things, the environments that are toxic to us because we need to be successful. We cannot be empty vessels that are burnt out, tired, unfulfilled, living check to check, and then go give loving, caring service to everyone. We have to be abundant to give abundance. Do we not? It's an incongruency in our principles, in our philosophy, to try to give away something we do not own. But it is there for the taking. You just have to declare it and then defy anyone who will try to take it from you. And the final thing, I cut out three Ds, but that's okay. The final thing is the result. We talked about result, right? I did this workshop once as, as a webinar to some private clients, and I really hesitated because I'm a very non-ego guy, I truly am. I, I'm just super chill, so I'm a Southern California surfer dude. I don't really care what people think about me that much. I got the love of my wife and my three girls, and I'm pretty good. I mean, I, I don't need to be here. I don't need to work. I mean, there, you know, I got a lot of goodness in my life. And I love cars. I always have, right? I used to race. I was a mechanic. And I like cars. And I have some really, I have a really fast car. And I hesitated, but I put a slide up at the back of my car. My license plate says Be Epic, which is cool. That's my company's name. But, but I put it on there, and I started the webinar with that picture. And the reason I did was I said, this is what you think success is. And this is, merely a, this is merely an effect. Everything, every cause has an effect. This is merely the effect. And it sits in my garage because of my cause. It sits there because I contribute value. I don't put myself first, I put others first. I've never once sought to make a dollar. I've sought to make a difference. And when I remove the things that interfere with that ability to make a difference, then I make that difference. And when I make that difference, I end up with a final D, my destiny. I'm the author. I get to write my book. I create my plan. And I take that blueprint, I implement that blueprint, and now I get to live the result. 
I want you to live that result. Chiropractic deserves to live that result. And most importantly, your community deserves you to live that result by living your cause. God bless you guys. Thank you so much.